in the name of the Lord. There is peace in the name. There is peace in the name. There is peace in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord. There's power in His name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Y'all was quick to sit down on that one. (laughs) Praise God. Amen. I know y'all tired. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But it's good. (laughs) It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Even in a tied body. Can I get a witness? I'd rather be tied in church than alive at the club. Huh? Have all the energy to run up in the club. I'd rather be tied in the house of the Lord. Because God woke me up this morning. Huh? It was God who started me on my way. So I'd rather be tied in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I was telling Sister Pam coming over here, I said it'd be good if the pastor let me preach sitting down. Have him pull up a chair. (laughs) But I I don't think that's going to happen. Praise God. Amen. But it's good. It's good to be here. Amen. Amen. First, I'm giving honor to God to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To our very fine pastor, Amen. Pastor Joe Lewis Ruffin Sr. Amen. To Mother Ruffin, God Amen. bless you. Amen. To all the saints and friends, Amen. it's good to be Amen. in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. To my lovely, beautiful, gorgeous wife, Pamela. Amen. 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 People are always asking why I keep saying that. Right. And I tell them, it's, it's, it's not good to tell a lie in the church. I just got to tell the truth. My beautiful, lovely, gorgeous wife, Pamela. Amen. I thank God for her. Twelve years we've been together. Twelve years we've been together. And I thank God for her. Amen. Let's get into the Word. We're going to get into the Word. I'm not going to keep you long. Amen. Get into the Word. John, the 15th chapter. The, we read from the the first through the eighth verse and we're going to read again just a couple more of those verses we're going to read verse 2 and uh, 5 and 8 John 15 and 2 it reads every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that bear fruit he purge it that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Verse 8, herein in my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. Bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. May the Lord be a blessing to the readers of his word. We will use this afternoon as a subject, the process in producing much fruit. The process in producing much fruit. You mind going to take off my jacket here, Pastor? Amen. We are familiar, very familiar, with the scriptures in Genesis Mm -hmm. in which God commands Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. God even told Noah Mm -hmm. and his family to go and be fruitful and multiply. And when God confirmed Jacob's name, when he turned his name from Jacob to Israel, Uh He told him to be fruitful yeah, that's right. and multiply. Yeah. And in a proper contents of, of, that, of, of what God was telling them, he wanted them to, to plant, replenish the earth. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, go make babies. Uh-huh. Go out and make babies. Yeah. 
But even if you are presently not in or you have passed the years of making babies, it's still God's will for you to be spiritually fruitful and to multiply. Yeah. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, are you fruitful? Are you fruitful? Are you multiplied? Praise the Lord. In today's lesson, today's message, we will examine the process in producing much fruit. The process in producing much fruit. We see in the text, we see that there are four levels of fruit production. First, there is no fruit, which is in verse 15 and 2, chapter 15 and 2. And then there is fruit, also in, in verse 2. And there is more fruit, which is in verse 2. But in the eighth verse, there is much fruit. Much fruit. So there is no fruit, fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. Praise the Lord. And the Father is glorified in us when we bear much fruit. That's in verse 8. The will of the Father is that we bear much fruit. Praise the Lord. But people, many people today, they measure their fruitfulness of their lives by the quantity of their activity. However, the fruit that we should produce is not our works or our outward appearance. Just because you attend church, pay tithes, preach, teach, evangelize, wear the right suit, or a sanctified dress with white stockings, doesn't mean you are bare any fruit. Is that right? The fact of the matter is, you can do all these things, and even more, and still have no fruit on your tree. No fruit. Fruit is not what you do, but who you are. That's what fruit is. And the fruit that the Lord wants us to have is found in Galatians, the fifth chapter, the 22nd verse, and the 23rd. Let's turn to that. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians 5 and 22 and 23. All right. Praise the Lord. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Let me read that again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Let's say it together. Love. Next one, joy, peace, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. These are the nine elements of the fruit of the Spirit. The nine elements of the fruit of the Spirit. Now let's define these elements. The first one, love. Love is defined as given to others. Basic needs without having as your motive personal reward. That's love. We had a need of a savior. God sent his son without getting anything returned. That's love. Joy, the spontaneous enthusiasm of your spirit when your soul is in fellowship with God. That's joy. So you can have joy in the midst of any situation. Praise the Lord. When your soul is in fellowship with God, yeah. peace, yeah. peace is the confidence and quietness of the soul. All right. Peace. Yeah. Sometimes when you're going through problems and issues, yeah. and you pray to the Lord, yeah. and the Lord gives you an answer, he gives you peace. Yeah. 
in the midst of a storm. Right. He gives you peace. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Long suffering, patience, accepting the difficult situation from God without giving him a deadline to remove it. That's long suffering. See, some folks like to tell God what to do and when to do it. Is that right? Lord, I want you to do this or fix this problem right now. Telling God what to do and when to do it. But Lord, let long suffering say, Lord, not my will. But thou will be done in your time. That's long suffering. Gentleness. Gentleness. Showing personal care and concern and meeting the needs of others. So you generally don't find gentleness in today's society. Folks are just mean. If anybody met any mean folks lately? Folks are just mean, pal. Just mean. I one time I was driving down the road and, and accidentally cut somebody off. Brother, see, I shouldn't have made that mistake. Man gave me the finger, hawked his horn. I said, look at that. Mean. I didn't mean to do that. But we have some mean folks out there. But we need to be more gentle. The next one, goodness. As Pastor mentioned earlier, goodness is, is, is love and action. Love and action. Love is more than just a feeling. It's an action. See, goodness is showing me that you love me by what you do. I can sit up and tell baby, Pam, my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous wife, and I don't even take the trash out. That ain't no love. Amen. That ain't no goodness. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. But goodness is love in action. Show me that you love me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The next one, faith. Faith is picturing what God intends to do yeah. in a given situation All right. and acting in harmony with it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Picturing what God intends to do in a given situation Amen. and acting in harmony with it. Faith is believing that we have a building somewhere. All right. right? And acting in harmony is paying the time for it all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Faith. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We can say, well, Lord, I have faith in there, but I ain't giving nothing. Yeah. That ain't no faith. Yeah. Acting in harmony. With what God intends to do. Yeah. Meekness. Meekness is yeah. yielding my personal rights and expectations right. to God. Yeah. Meekness. Yeah. Some folks say, well, I, they shouldn't have did that to me. I have my rights. Yeah. They can't do that to me. Yeah. Like Pastor mentioned about C. Pleasant. He could say, I have my rights. Yeah. They don't have a right to that. We have a right to remain silent right. and get on our knees and pray about it. Right. Is that right? Tell God if a God know how to fix things. Amen. He knows how to meekness. Meekness. Temperance. Self-control. Temperance is self-control. Instant obedience to the initial promptings of God's spirit. Instant. When the Holy Spirit prompts you to not lust after that man or woman, don't lust. Turn the other way. Close your eyes. Run like Joseph. When the Holy Spirit prompts you to not cut someone out, keep your mouth shut. Don't say a muffling word. Praise the Lord. Do what the Holy Spirit prompts you to do instantly. That's temperance. That's self-control. Now these are the nine elements of much fruit. And if you had none of the elements, that are, are they manifesting in your daily life, you are in the no fruit category. Amen. No fruit category. Yeah, yeah. If you have one or two of these elements, you are in the fruit category. Yeah, yeah. If you have three or more of these, you are in the more fruit category. Yeah. If you have all nine of them, yeah. you are in the much fruit category. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. What fruit category are you in? I'm not asking about your friend, right. your neighbor, right. your partner, right. your pastor. Yeah. But what fruit category are you in? Right. Praise the Lord. Right. See, everybody wants to be a fruit inspector. Right. Everybody wants to fruit, expect, inspect other folks' fruit. Yeah. But you know, everybody, I need to expect my own fruit. Yeah. The Bible tells us yeah. that we should examine our own self. Yeah. Check yourself out. Yeah. 
I'm moving on, I'm moving on. Praise God. So the question is, how can we produce the much fruit? Because I don't want to have no fruit, fruit or more fruit. But I want to have much fruit. Somebody say much fruit. Much fruit. Because much fruit glorifies the Father. Praise the Lord. And the key to bearing much fruit is found in what Jesus said in John 15 and 4. Right. He said that he was the vine, yeah. and the father is the gardener. Yeah. Right. The goal of a father, the goal of a gardener, is for the branch, the believers, to produce much fruit. Yeah. But in order for the branch to bear much fruit, it must abide in the vine. Yeah. Must abide in the vine. Yeah. We must remain in Jesus. Yeah. The reason why the branch needs the vine, because without the vine, without Jesus, we yeah. can't do nothing. Yeah. Zero. Zero. Yeah. Nothing at all. Amen. You can't produce any fruit without Jesus. Yeah. Right. You can't produce joy, mm -hmm. peace, long-suffering, yeah. gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, yeah. temper, without Him. Yeah. You need Jesus. Amen. You can read all the self-help books you want to. All right. You can watch Oprah and Dr. Fee right. and still be lacking right. in fruit. Yes. More Jesus, right. more fruit. Right. Less Jesus, right. less fruit. Right. Praise the Lord. Very much fruit yes. is not an event, but it's a process. Right. Praise the Lord. Yes. You don't give your life to Christ one day, Amen. and next day you get all now. I got all nothing. I have arrived, right, sister? I have arrived. But the very much fruit yeah, yeah. is a process. Okay. Praise the Lord. So let's look at the process and very much fruit. Yeah. The first step in very much fruit is plowing your field. Plowing yeah. your field. Yeah. In order for you to have much fruit, your spiritual ground must be plowed. See, I, I'm no fan of the plow. I've told the story before. I'm no fan of the, of the plow. How my father, you know, we used to be out there all day, plowing no feet. And one day we was out there, plow, plow, pastor was plowing, we was out there plowing with him. It was getting dark. And pastor walking back to the car. I said, oh, well, me and Brother Earth, all right, we going home. We felt good, we going home. Pastor went to the car, cut on his high beam, and kept on plowing. I ain't no friend of the plow. I'm no friend of the plow. Amen. Amen. But if you want to produce much fruit, much fruit, you must plow the land. Your fields must be plowed. Jesus told a parable about seed. That scattered on an unplowed land. Yeah. Some landed on rocky places. Yeah. They came up quickly, but the sun got to them. Yeah. And they withered and died. Yeah. Others were planted among the weeds. Yeah. The weeds choked the plant. Yeah. They did not come up. Right. So you must break up the ground to get rid of the weeds. Yeah. So the roots can go deep yeah. in the ground. Yeah. Jeremiah 4 said, the Lord told the people of Judah and Jerusalem, Power up the hard ground of your heart. Do not waste your good seed among thorns. In order to bear much fruit, our stony hearts must be broken up. Our spiritual weeds must be poured up. We don't pry them up with pillars and rakes, but we pry them up with prayer and the word of God. Praise the Lord. And if we find our hearts are still hard, right. still got still spiritual weeds. Yeah. Don't stop plowing. Right. Just turn on your spiritual high beams yeah. <laughs> and keep on plowing. Right. Keep on praying. Yeah. Keep on fasting. Yeah. Keep on reading the Word of God right. because your goal right. is to bear much fruit. Yeah. The first step yeah. in bearing much fruit is plow your feet. Yeah. The second step. And very much fruit is planting the right seed. You got to plow. But you got to plant the right seed. In order to bear the right spiritual fruit, you must plant the right spiritual seed. 
If you want, if you plant watermelon seeds, don't look for no cucumbers. Don't be looking for them. Don't be looking for them. You reap what you sow. If you spend your time in putting the things of the word, don't look for the things of the spirit. Don't look for it. Don't look for it. Don't look. You can't expect to dance and shake and get your groove on to Beyonce, B2K, R. Kelly, and watch Jenny, Jerry, and Ricky reject Ebony S. and all we call. Never pick up the word. Never pray. Never listen to the gospel music. Never let watch a Christian program. You never do any of those things. Expect the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Expect to bear some fruit. It's not going to happen. Tell your neighbor it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not happening. It's not happening. And y'all say, well, Brother Pat, how do you know about that? Because I'm the VOE. The voice of experience. Yeah. I used to, I got to tell you, I used to go to church faithfully. Yeah, growing up, mother. Mother and pastor used to drag us to church. Sunday morning, I'm right there, Sunday school, right there, Brother Pat. But you know what, Saturday night, I was at that club, getting my groove on. Yeah, and I'm up and trying to sing, uh, Jesus is mine, and I had the beat of the world in me. You can't sing Jesus is mine with the beat of the world on you. Praise God. But the right seed must be planted in order to bear much fruit. Praise the Lord. Lord, plant the right seed. I don't want the seed of hatred. I want the seed of love. I don't want the seed of selfishness. But I want the seed of giving. I don't want the seed of sadness. But I want the seed of joy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord, I want to be like you. Philippians 4, they tell us whatsoever is true. Yeah. Noble, just, pure, love, the good report, yeah. virtue, praiseworthy. Yeah. Think on these things. Right. When a person allows to occupy his mind, yeah. will sooner or later yeah. determine his speech yeah. and his action. Right. Old saying, so a thought, yeah. reap an act. Yeah. So an act, reap a habit. Yeah. So a habit, reap a character. Yeah. So a character, reap a destiny. Yeah. If you want to bear, the much fruit, the right seed yeah. must be planted. Yeah. And the third step in mm-hmm. very much fruit yeah. is pruning. Yeah. Pruning. Yeah. See, everyone likes to bear much fruit, but not too many folks like to be pruned. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Because pruning hurts. Yeah. yeah, it hurts. God prunes us through events and circumstances. Yeah. And if you're going through troubles right now, it may be that God is pruning you. Yeah, yeah pruning you. He prunes us yeah. by sending something or someone our way so that we may grow. If he sees that you need to grow in love, he will put someone in your path that is not lovable so you can grow. He will send the most unlovable person to your office have them sit right next beside you in your cubicle yeah. Yeah. so you can grow. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Right. He will put that un- unlovable person right in the church with you yeah. so you can grow. Yeah. He, if he sees that, that you need more patience, yeah. he will send a circumstance that make you want to wait or make him wait on him. All right. Praise the Lord. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, bearing much fruit yeah. is a process. Not even. God has continued to shape us and, and mold us in the image of his son. And in the shaping process, and I'm wrapping it up so I wouldn't be long. In the shaping process, he might use scissors. He might use clippers. And it doesn't work, he might use a chainsaw. Why? Because he wants us to bear much fruit. And even fruitful branches need some pruning. For the best of us have have notions and passion, desire that I'm not like him. Even the most holy, godly person needs to prove. When we compare ourselves to Christ, none of us measures up. But God is every day, he's pruning us to shape us in the the image of his son. Praise the Lord. 
So I pray that Lord, prove me some more. Because I want some more. Yeah, I want much fruit. I want much fruit. Now here's it. Here's the conclusion. After you have been plowed, after the planting season, after the pruning, then comes the picking. Huh? Plow, planting, pruning, and picking. See, a lot of folks like to pick before they plow, plant, and be pruned. They just show up to pick. Have them, oh, where's all the watermelons there, Pastor? Where's those greens at that you already plowed and planted? Let's show them to be picked. Praise the Lord. But we must start with the plow, then the plant, and then the pruning. And then that's, then you do the picking, yeah. which is harvest time. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the harvest time. Yeah. See, harvest time is when we reap yeah. much fruit. Yeah. The scripture says, for he that sold to the flesh, yeah. shall the flesh reap corruption. Yeah. But he that sold to the spirit, yeah. shall the, uh, the spirit reap everlasting life. Yeah. And let us, the scripture yeah. Let us be not be weary yeah, right. and well doing. Yeah. For in due season yeah. we shall reap yeah. if we faint not. All right. Lord, I have plowed, yeah. planted, yeah. and have been pruned. Yeah. And Lord, then I'm ready yeah. Yeah. for some pickings. Yeah. I'm ready yeah. for much fruit. All right. Lord, I'm looking yeah. for a great harvest. All right. I'm looking for a great harvest of love. Yeah. A great harvest of joy, yeah. a great harvest of peace, yeah. a great harvest of self-control. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, I want much fruit. Yeah. The Lord, because I realize that you are glorified yeah. in much fruit. Yeah. The process in producing much fruit. Yeah. The process yeah. in producing yeah. much fruit. Yeah. Plowing, yeah. planting, pruning, and picking. Yeah. Amen. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. 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 Pray. Amen. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. The process of producing much fruit. Amen. Four peas. Four peas. Amen. Amen. Flowering. Planting. Pruning and picking. Amen. Amen. We have enjoyed the message. Amen. 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 And truly, that's my message. Amen. 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 Praise God. I really know something about that. Amen. But you know, a lot of folks, they want to pick. Amen. And never plow. Amen. Amen. Some go out and want to plant. Never plow. My neighbor wanted his grass to grow. And he went out and threw the seeds on top of the ground. And he went, Reverend, Reverend, what happened? Why did it didn't come up? I said, you got to dig up the ground. Amen. So he went out there and dug up the ground and replanted it. He said, thank you, Reverend Brother. It's pretty. Amen. But you got to plow first. Amen. If you don't plow, amen. No need of you planting. Amen. No need of you thinking about pruning. And certainly you ain't going to have nothing to pick. We have folks. Amen. They don't do either, but they come to pick. Yeah. Amen. OPs. Other people. Amen. Amen. They are going through the garden picking other folks' stuff. Yeah. And when you catch them, they say, oh, my cousin told me to come and get something out of the garden. Yeah. Yeah. You mean this is not his garden? <laughs> Amen. But so folks are doing that today yeah. in the natural world and they're doing it in the spiritual world. Yeah. But I can tell you one thing that Jesus is checking all fruit. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, he's checking all fruit. 
Amen. And if you don't have your, your bread and not on it, amen, you're going to lose out. Amen. Because Jesus knows whether you stole it or not. Amen. We don't know, but Jesus knows. Amen. So that behoves us. Amen. If we want to bear much fruit, to do it right. Do it right. Break up the ground. Plant the seed. Prune it. And then we have much fruit. Amen. 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 That's what we are, what it's all about, saying. Amen. Because there's so many folks go through this life, live to be 75, 85, some almost 100 years old. Yeah. Don't even know the Lord. Yeah. Haven't broken up the first ground, haven't planted the first seed. It's sad. And those that, you know, I get to see this because, you know, you go around to the senior homes and the places, sometimes in the hospital, and these, they don't even know the Lord. And it's sad. Amen. And, you know, there used to be a, a inscription in a mother's bedroom, where shall you spend eternity? And I used to look at that sign all the time when I was a little boy. You know, what did that mean? But I didn't know at that time. But I know now. Where shall you spend eternity? Amen. You keep, because you got to pass on. You can live to be old as Bob Hope. <laughs> Amen. And be a funny man. But you got to go. You can be as old as Strong Thurman and be a rapist. Amen. And don't get caught because you're white. Amen. But you got to go. Amen. So you got to remember. Amen. Regardless. Amen. To what happened in life. You got to spend eternity somewhere. So why not try to have some fruit? You know, there's another part of that sermon. Amen. On the other side is that. I'm sending up my timber, yeah, yeah. you know, wood, hay, seven, amen. And then they had the precious gold and silver, yeah. amen. And they tell me the wood, hay, and seven is going to be burned up. That's the other side of this, yeah. this, this sermon, amen. Yeah, amen. So we got to make sure we sending up the good stuff. Yeah. And then we have some fruit, yeah. amen. Much fruit. <laughs> That's what we want. Amen. We thank God for the word. Amen. At this time, let us come around the altar for our altar prayer. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being so kind. 
Mm. Lord, we thank you for being so merciful. Lord, we praise you and magnify you for what you have done already. And Lord, we anticipate greater things. Lord, we anticipate that you will break every yoke. Lord, we anticipate that you will shower all blessings. Lord, we anticipate that you will heal hearts and heal minds and heal bodies in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we stand here in the need of prayer. Realize the Lord that we are not where we should be. Lord, we realize that we were much through on our tree. But Lord, we also realize that we got to stay connected to the vine. Lord, we need to stay connected to you, Lord. Lord, we can't do nothing without you. Lord, we can't walk without you. Lord, we can't talk without you. Lord, we can't function without you. Lord, we need you every hour. And Lord, we ask that you would touch us. Touch us in a mighty way. And Lord, we ask that you would do a new thing. Just for a new thing. In our heart. In our mind. In our spirit. In the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord.